Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Okay, so uh, we will continue with the pediatric scenarios. So, uh, we have got a pre-alert. A mother is bringing a child. Uh, she has found out that she has become suddenly blue in color. So, that is the history. The approximate age of the child is around uh, one and a half years. So, that is the only history that we have. So, that is the scenario. So, you wanted to do anything before that? Uh, we'll uh, initially arrange the things according to wet flags. Okay. Uh, we so, that we have already discussed in the last and one. And then we'll assign the uh, duties. Uh, Dr. Make Dr. sure that all your equipments, equipments are available. Airway, right. all those things are kept ready. Okay. So, you can pre-alert and you have got a, since you have received a pre-alert, you can be always ready with it. So, that's the mother brought in the child who is cyanotic. Um, the baby is cyanosis, mm. cyanosed. So, we'll initially start on rescue breaths. Dr. Yes. Shreya, can you just... Uh, we'll quickly go uh, for a pat assessment. Okay. Uh, pat assessment ap uh, includes appearance. Uh, appearance of the child. Child is blue in color. Uh, then, uh, work of breathing. Work of breathing. Not much of chest rises are seen. And then, color is cyanosis. Color is cyanosis. Appearance, child is sick looking drowsy. So, uh, we will give rescue breaths every 2 to 3 seconds, one okay. breath for 5 breaths and we will connect to the monitors. Monitors connected. Saturation 69. Heart rate is around 50, 50 beats per minute. Okay, so uh, now uh, since there is less than 60 uh, pulse rate with the uh, signs of pure, pure perfusion, we will start on CPR regarding to doing it like a cardiac arrest. It should be uh, for one patient, One if there is only one rescuer, 15 is to 2. If there is uh, one rescuer, 30 is to 2. If there are two, 15 is to 2. Okay, 15 is to 2, uh, compression started. And we will um, we'll keep IV lines. Okay, now. so IV line. Uh, okay. Rest breaths. What are the important things that you need to look in for when you are doing back mass ventilation? Uh, position, uh, position uh, means uh, head tilt, chin lift position. Okay. And then uh, whether there is the uh, nice um, um, this, um, seal. seal is Proper the, seal is the, being placed then. And then uh, the bag, when means the ambu bag is working. Working ambu bag, bag then. Uh, then. Then whenever you have a pediatric airway, what are the problems in the pediatric airway? The occiput is a little bit on the higher side. Maybe you need to give a small support uh, beneath the net. And another thing, you have to look for an adequate chest, chest rise. rise. So, uh, at we the end of 15, we just see whether there is adequate chest rise is there or not. There is no adequate chest rise. So, if there is no adequate chest rise, what do you want to do? We will uh, reposition the child. Reposition. It's, she is doing in the right position only. Then what else you wanted to do? Uh, then we'll have to check for whether any obstruction is there, okay. upper airway obstruction, whether there is a enlarged tongue, any since the age is one one and a half years, any foreign body. Okay. So there is no chest rise again. Okay. So what? We'll she can continue with CPR we'll and we'll she has to a, look for any air, uh, any obstruction, <laughs> any obstruction, any foreign body is well. You can use, use the laryngoscope and then. Okay. You are able to see a foreign body, okay. okay. If it is visible, then you can try with the macular sposis. Okay, so a foreign body was there, removed. Now you can continue with back mass ventilation at a ratio of 15 is to 2. We'll see okay. for a vital surgery. Vitals. So now the key question is coming when we should give being adrenaline. Oh. Actually, when it is symptomatic when, bradycardia, yeah. you should have given adrenaline yeah. also right now. So what is the dose of adrenaline that you wanted to give? 0.01 uh, mg per kg. Yeah, you is can a, give. Actually, you can give a one dose of adrenaline, adrenaline also. So since we have found out the cause, probably in foreign body that was causing obstruction, that is fine. But what are the key differences that we have done from the routine resuscitation here? Uh, when the baby is cyanos, we will initially started with rescue breaths. Mm. Uh, then we will, we'll, uh, when the patient went in bradycardi, we mm. started on a cardiac arrest algorithm. Okay. But, uh, during Do bag and mask ventilation, we will have to see whether there is any chest rise or not. We'll okay. See when, if you are suspecting. So, two minutes it. is over. So, we will uh, see rhythm check. Rhythm check. See the heart rate. It has increased. 
to 80s. Saturation was all improved. Yes, for a pulse. And, and look for any pulse. Pulse is present. Pulse is palpable. Right. There is a palpable pulse present. So the baby have attained a return of spontaneous circulation. So here it was a purely the child has not in gone into a cardiac arrest. Before that we have recognized that the child has gone into cardiac arrest. And uh, we have found out. Now just a scenario but this is a must very straightforward scenario. So what are the key take home messages that when we have a child regarding choking. So that is the learning point for the simulation right. exercise. How they will present to you? Um, when there is, if there are infant, there will be some uh, bradypnea. Upper respiratory symptoms, we have to see any strider, okay. uh, any uh, breathing difficulty they are showing, okay. any, uh, um, bradypnea, mm -hmm. any decreased respiratory efforts, and then uh, any cyanosis okay. due to hypoxia. And then if you have, uh, when in the hospital, we have to see whether any um, V's or the, uh, if any, there is bronchial uh, for okay. So the usual presentation, you will have a typical presentation. You will not come to know that there is a foreign body aspiration. So when you will suspect with age group of children, you will suspect a foreign body aspiration. I will. Which age group that we will usually suspect? Five, five, three, huh? one, two. One to five years, five years is a little bit. Six months to. Maybe six months, maybe to up till two years will be the peak. Incidence is around one year, nine months to uh, maybe 15 months of age. That is the maximum uh, incidence that we are seeing uh, regarding foreign body. So they will be curious to go around. They will start picking things. They doesn't know whether it is an edible or not edible. They will have a practice of keeping that inside their mouth. So that is the common thing, differential that you need to give. When the child is brought cyanosed, so the scenario what I give us, I know it's very easy. There is some problem with the airway and breathing. So otherwise they can come just with a collapse. We don't have any history. So similarly when we are discussing the another differential that you need to consider is an anaphylaxis. So similar presentation where we don't know what was happening. That even adult presentation there is sudden collapse. We are not very sure and uh, there is no precipitating even as such we are not getting in. But in this age group what we have to suspect one of the important differential even a sinus child is a coming is a foreign body aspiration. Okay. What are the other differentials that you need to consider? This is a cardiac arrest scenario. Okay. You leave that away, away but child is brought sinus to the ED. What are the other things that you will see? Uh, breath holding spells can okay. be. Okay. Breath holding spells. And then when the entity like brew. Okay. Uh, that is brief, respon uh, uh, brief responsive. Uh, uh, brief brief resolving uh, resolving and uh, unexplained event unexplained event so what will be the presentation like that uh, there will be the baby will be till uh, one one year more than 60 days age uh, till one year uh, the uh, patient will there will be uh, acute brief events uh, following when they present there will be uh, asymptomatic and uh, there will be some symptoms like uh, either there will be cyanosis or pale uh, any uh, decreased breath movements or apnea and then uh, a unresponsiveness and tone change in tone either hypo or hypertone yes so usually these episodes are less than one, one minute, minute duration so that is the key thing so the moment they bring to the er they will be completely absolutely fine, fine. they will not be cyanosed so the mother have noticed the child was suddenly playing suddenly started crying and suddenly turned blue and it was there for like 10, uh, more, 10 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, yes. but less than one minute. And after that, the child is back to normal. So that is a history. So when you have a cyanotic spell, when you have a breath holding spell, when you have a seizure, all those things will be certainly different from the, uh, from the presentation. So uh, brew is the one thing that we need to, previously it is called as apparent life threatening, apparent life -threatening yeah. events. Now it is being replaced by a terminology called as brew. Oh. But this age group, it can come, but keep that in your mind. How to brew? Usually when they bring into the ER, it will be, the child will be okay. Well, you need to just to counsel them and you can get back them. But if it's a multiple recurrent episode, you need to be aware of that. Now, coming back to foreign body, what will be the other presentation for foreign body? Choking will be called. See, immediately we said regarding choking and later on the presentation, like after like two year, three year, four years, the child is having recurrent pneumonias. Recurrent pneumonias. We don't know what is the reason for a recurrent pneumonia. There is a history of lung abscess formation, wheezing history, multiple hospitalization. So that is the time that we need to think whether there is any foreign body which would have aspirated, which would have settled inside the lung, which is causing this frequent event. So that is a chronic event, but they can come with a pneumonia or maybe something like a wheeze or something, but it will not be an acute obstruction like what we seen in this child. So what are the immediate management step? It is not important for a doctor, but it is important for a, any common person to understand regarding the management of choking. So, 
how will you divide this group of patients uh, in this children it is difficult but maybe two year two and a half year old we can tell them to cough to cough if they are conscious and they are able to cough you can ask them to cough but there can be a group of patient where they are totally unresponsive they are unable to produce an effective cough so during that time what do you need to do in uh, if the child is infant you can uh, place the can you just show me uh, how to do the procedure yes uh, when the child is less than 1 year okay. uh, we can give a back thrust and chest you can sit on the chair and do so we'll keep the baby uh, in with the one one leg extended okay. we'll place the three fingers over the face of the baby then we'll keep the head down and then uh, five back thrust like okay. uh, pressure should be upward and backward like okay. this five back thrust and then keep the baby in the opposite hand then five chest compressions okay so uh, you need to repeat the cycle say, uh, till, till the foreign, the foreign body, body is coming out. out so that is one thing that you need to practice back blows five back blows and mm -hmm. five chest compressions. compressions is that what you need to do what are the things that should be avoided which is very very important we have an equipment here we have a laryngoscope we have a megal forcer Blind finger sweeping should not be very done. important. You should not determine however you are good at it. Don't think about doing a blind finger sweeping. What is the problem with that? It the blind go inside can further inside. go inside. <laughs> the similarly, when you have a foreign body in the nose, mm -hmm. foreign body in the nose, that's again one of the biggest challenge. How will you remove this? Uh, with for, only by visualization with force of that. What is mother's kiss technique? So that is again yeah, there is one methodology yeah, by which. The child will be very comfortable with the mother. So the child can take, the mother can hold the baby and the mother can blow into the patient's mouth. Mm -hmm. Like she is going to give a kiss to the child, blow to the mouth so that the so foreign body out. will come out through the nose. nose. So that is one thing that we can try for smaller children mm -hmm. when they are coming with foreign body. If it can happen at home also. So that is one method they can try at home. Then if it fails, if the child become you can have three scenarios. What are the three scenarios? One is effective cuff is there, then unresponsive but not in cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. But the third can be in cardiac okay. arrest. So in cardiac arrest, just That's go ahead with CPR. But here, what was the scenario? We had a bradycardia. So bradycardia, we initiated the back CPR. Back. We initiated the CPR. Okay. And most importantly, back mass ventilation is the key here. Back mass ventilation, hypoxia. Okay. We think that cyanosis, it's a hypoxic cardiac arrest. So that is why we went straight ahead with the That's back right. mass ventilation rather than putting the patient on a 50 liter oxygen. Mm -hmm. So people would have think, why don't we put them on a 50 liters oxygen? That is also okay. But here the chest exertions were less. There was less movement of the chest. We don't know how the delivery, but there is no harm if the respiratory rate of the patient was otherwise conscious, he could have kept. But here the patient was unresponsive. It's always better to do back mass ventilation. So during back mass ventilation, the key things always, always look for chest That's rise. Nice. If you don't get a chest rise, one thing whether you are not doing it properly so what is the additional thing you can use a two people method right. so one can hold the mask okay. and one and can apple. give the bag mask so that is one method and second thing what you what you can do you can see the position whether everything is fine equipment check i am not discussing because that should have been done prior to the arrival of the child so equipment should be functioning equipment then you need to look for chest rise if you don't get a chest rise stop your back mask look for a foreign body so that is a key message you found like it will be dramatic here but is the right way to do these things but you have to look for whenever there is a no chest rise you have to look whether there is any foreign body that is causing an obstruction if you are seeing use a Megal forceps. So the megal forceps is here. And with the help of a laryngoscope, you can do a proper scopy, but don't stop the CPR. Okay. So the child is a little bit elderly. What do you do? We can give uh, abdominal thrust, like hemorrhage manual we can do. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, we'll uh, just below the CP sternum, above the amplicus, we'll okay. um, keep the patient in front. If lower child, we'll have to kneel down. And then, uh, then we'll have to keep a fist uh, around uh, the lower six seven And with other hand, just give a upward and backward. Pressure. Backward thrust. I think we are trying to bring out the foreign body. So, uh, that is regarding the hemorrhage manual. And one more important thing, when you are alone, what will you do? Uh, we can, uh, if we have, we are having a talking, we can do the same thing here or else we can uh, lean down over the uh, edge of a chair, of a chair of, edge of a chair, table, edge of a table. table, whichever is available, you can do that. That is the thing. So what we discussed today is a pediatric advanced life support. We have an upper airway pathology. So when we start discussing PALS, 
we always discuss respiratory issues so in that upper respiratory problem so upper respiratory problem one of the most common thing that what we need to is the a foreign body obstruction what are the other signs of an upper airway obstruction what are the things by saying that okay this patient has got an upper airway problem upper airway uh, if the patient is unconscious in children there will be large tongue so tongue okay. cord can happen and then any infection causing tracheolaryngobronchitis like okay throat. that all i agree i will you suspect strider uh, uh, okay strider that is acceptable then snoring snoring okay then um, any drooling of saliva drooling of saliva so that's one again one important thing you are able to see a lot of drooling of saliva so this all gives up a clue that probably we are dealing with an upper respiratory condition strider especially very important it's an upper respiratory pathology so here multiple pathology laryngotracheobronchitis that is otherwise called as croup all those things is coming under our upper respiratory so remember upper respiratory is one of the most common and among this foreign body obstruction we should be never be missing it's a simple thing where you can save the child even if you should be tra training the mother all the mothers how to do handle the foreign body when it happens at home okay you have anything else to be added anyone anyone no no we have completed okay fine thank you